Hello. Uh, thank you for signing up to attend the Flip Learning in Theory and Practice session at EA Course 2019. Uh, my name is James Wright and I am currently a physics teacher at Garden International School in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Now, uh, I'm assuming if you signed up for this session, you already have an idea about what flip learning is all about. Um, but I just want to start off by asking you, uh, what would you do if I could offer you 35% extra lessons over the course of the year? Well, hopefully you've got a, a bunch of ideas from that. Um, and I want to talk about why I believe that flipping is so powerful, because I think it can give you that 35% extra time. And I'm going to explain why. So. There's lots of different definitions of flipping around, uh, so I'd like to start just by laying out a definition that we're going to use for the purposes of this workshop. Uh, so for these sessions, we're going to say that flipping is a process that requires students to acquire knowledge at home uh, and then apply that, less, that knowledge in, a, in the lesson. So it's slightly different to uh, the standard sort of model that we would use, where we would spend most of our time in the lesson explaining ideas, uh, possibly standing at the front, possibly through other methods, and then give the students homework to go and apply that knowledge. With flipping, the students do the majority of, sorry, spend the majority of their time doing an activity, um, and they spend the majority of their homework learning new content. Uh, and the reason that I think it is such a powerful tool is basically boiled down by these two pie charts. So um, at GIS, we'd had a long discussion about flipping and we sort of started to, to employ it more and more. Um, and one of the things that we started off by doing was to do a little informal survey of what we're spending our lesson time actually doing. Um, and the, the sort of two key sections that I think are, are most important for learning is the yellowy-orange section, which is about explaining content, and the purple section, which, as we're mostly a science department, uh, was all about labs, but also your one-to-one -one work, your practical work, anything like that. Um, now, it's my contention that the majority of learning takes place during the purple section and not during the yellow section. So when you have a group of students stood at the front sort of watching you explain something, I would argue that you're probably hitting the middle of the class most of the time there. Your very high attainers probably have already understood the content, uh, and so, yeah, you, you probably can ask them to explain things to other people or pick on them for the more higher order thinking questions, but it's not necessarily the most effective use of time for them. Uh, and similarly, your lowest attaining students may well be completely lost, not understanding what's going on. And then during that purple section in traditional lesson, that's when you go and challenge your highest attainers by giving them extension work or different problems. And you go and support your lower attainers by explaining the things they didn't get during the initial explanation. Well, with flipped learning, we take that whole yellow section out of your lesson and the students do it at home. I'm going to contend that videos are the best way to do that. So for my students, they're spending their time watching a video just like you are now. But when they get to something they don't understand, they pause it, they rewind, they make a few more notes on it. And if they still don't understand, they come to my lesson with a list of questions. That totally changes the dynamic of my lesson because from the moment they come into my room, they're asking me questions about things that they didn't understand to try and make sure that they have that full understanding and full mastery of the topic. It also means that my highest attainers spend no time in the lesson sitting there going, yeah, I've got this, move on, I'm bored. Because they have a whole section of work that they can go through and they're constantly pushing themselves forwards. There should be no point where any student is sat there doing nothing. So effectively, I would say that a really good flip lesson is gaining you an extra third of your lesson time, which you can fill with really cool, exciting activities that's going to move the students on in their understanding. Why flip? What's the, what does the research say about it? Um, I've distilled quite a lot of reading about this, um, and I don't claim to be a, a, an expert on the pedagogy of it, but what does seem to be a really common theme is that flipping in the way that I'm talking about it here, where the students have a video lecture and then they consolidate it in class, um, it pretty much always has a net positive effect on student outcomes, and a net positive effect on student outcomes for all levels of attainment. However, those videos have to be really carefully and effectively planned and produced, so they need to be tailored to your content. Um, if you look around, a lot of people will reuse content from other things. That, that sometimes works really well. 
Um, but I would argue that generally stuff that's made by your own department um, that's tailored to your own learners is going to be the most effective way of doing it. Um, and that learning also must be followed up with quality intervention and support. So that's where I'm talking about your lower attaining students coming in and saying, right, I didn't quite understand what you were saying here about how we got from this equation to this equation. And you sit down one on one and explain it to them. Or for your highest attaining students, you go, right, did you understand everything? Cool, try these consolidation activities. You've done that? Excellent. Right, now, here's some uh, higher year problems that you can try. Or here's a, a higher order problem that you can, you can get your teeth into. So it, it's that intervention that really makes it effective. Uh, one of the things that people sometimes say to me is, well, if I do and flip all these lessons, how do I know that uh, my school's not going to turn around one day and go, thanks very much, love those videos, they're great, uh, we don't need you anymore because we're just going to show you videos. I would argue that to do a, fl a flipped learning effectively, you have to be really, really good at teaching your subject because the students are going to come in with questions left, right and centre from everything that they've seen in the video and you don't know what they're going to ask about and you don't know what they're going to come up with next. So actually, flip learning, I argue, requires even more mastery of the content from the teachers than necessarily standing at the front. Uh, because you really have to respond dynamically to those different questions that they're going to come up with. Um, so hopefully um, you are now thinking, yeah, okay, I, I get it, I think this could be useful, I'm going to try it. Um, but I'm not naive, I know that we all have massive problems uh, with uh, any new uh, technology. So um, what I'll ask you to do is just have a little think about what are the barriers that you might face using flipped learning in your school. Um, it could be technology based, could be internet based, uh, it could be actually content creation. If you drop that down then in the actual session um, we can address some of those and we'll talk about potential solutions to them. Okay, so let's think about next steps. Uh, I'm really glad you stuck with me uh, for this video. Uh, you have two choices now. Uh, during the session, you can either look at producing resources for flipped lessons, in which case we can look at how to uh, modify your existing slides and PowerPoints uh, and produce something new, or you can explore how to actually create the videos themselves and look at the film content. So what would be really helpful is if you could just think about which of these, or both, it's fine to do both, um, would you like to do, and then I can use that to inform what I'm going to do in the session. Um, Whichever one you pick, um, it would be really great if you could come along with uh, maybe a scheme of work or a section of lessons that you're thinking about flipping, um, and then we can look at different ways that you can do that in the session. But thank you so much for watching, uh, and I really look forward to meeting you at EACOS 2019.